to give us an introduction to the topic today and to introduce our panel of speakers, I would like to introduce you to Louise Sperling, who is a senior technical advisor at Catholic Relief Services. She has managed and technically backstopped programs in over 30 countries, including Africa, Asia, and Latin America. I would also like to highlight a new website, which is www.seedsystem.org, which shares practical and policy advice for those supporting smallholder farmer seed systems in crisis, chronic stress, and developmental periods. Luis? Okay, again, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to those in the room. You should know on the webinar we're expecting about 400 people. So it's a great group assembled together. Okay, this webinar is about seed, which is, of course, a critical input for smallholder farmers. But more specifically, this webinar is about a certification system for seed. Certification is a big issue, not a small issue. Certification is about livelihoods. A certification system shapes whether farmers can access the range of crops and varieties they need for production, for income, for nutrition, and for resilience. The certification system shapes if farmers can get not just maize, but if they can get legumes, tubers, the minor cereals. Okay, the focus today is on a particular category of certification called Quality Declared Seed, QDS. QDS aims to be a seed quality assurance system which delivers good seed, but at a level which is less demanding in time, money, and rigor than full certification. And most of you might know certified seed. That's full certification. Okay, quality declared seed standards are transparent. They've been formally outlined by the UN FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. And I want to draw your attention to two documents. This one here on the screen, 185, is a general overview document that looks at alternative seed quality guide standards for 92 crops. Then again, very transparently, there's another guide issued 2006, um, which focuses specifically on the vegetatively propagated crops. Okay, in practice, to promote greater availability and access to good seed, there are a number of countries that have already adopted QDS regulations. And here I've made an initial list, but maybe those online and in the room can add countries. You can see there are some in Latin America, and then there's a growing number in Africa, Ethiopia, Uganda, Tanzania, Zambia. You know, these are all fairly recent developments. Finally, to spur thinking, and to highlight the urgent need for greater flexibility and regulation, I want to go back to smallholder farmers, because that's where our focus has to be if we're going to have impact. A group of us have data on where smallholder farmers actually get their seed and the type. And this right now is the largest data set in the world. What I'm showing here is uh, 9,660 uh, entries. We now have about 15,000. It's growing. Important, what you see here in this circle chart is that smallholder farmers do access and buy certified seed. Right here. So they get it from commercial companies and agro dealers. Farmers access certified seed, but it's only 2% of what they sow, and most of that is maize. Okay, otherwise, to get the range of crops they need, 
to get the varieties they need, smallholder farmers are going elsewhere. So they're going, some of it's their own stock, but basically at this point in time, smallholder farmers are ac accessing 51% of their seed over half from local markets. So they're buying it, but they're not buying certified seed. Okay, so obviously we need to think about other mechanisms to put on offer good quality seed, which delivers a range of crops, but in a less costly manner. And that's why we're here today. Okay, let me introduce the speakers. And I'm going to introduce them in the order in which they're going to speak. I feel really privileged to be able to do this. It's a great group of people. Okay, Niels Lowers. Oh, let me go back. Niels Lowers is director of Plantum, which is the association of companies in the Netherlands dealing with plant reproductive materials. He's trained as a plant breeder at Wageningen University, and he spent 10 years working in the field in Asia and Africa and on seed projects before returning to Wageningen. Based on that international experience, he developed the concept of integrated seed sector development, ISSD, um, which basically provides policy space for looking at a diversity of systems, both formal and informal. Okay, in terms of policy specifically, you should know he's, he's uh, quite precise. He's looked at intellectual property rights in the WTO, national sovereign rights on biological diversity, you might know the CBD, farmers' rights, national seed laws, so covering the spectrum. Dr. Lowers, Niels, has also advised for a range of agencies, the World Bank, the FAO, the CGIAR. Currently, he represents the Netherlands seed sector, nationally and internationally. Niels is also an external member of the Law and Governance Group of Wageningen University. Very much welcome. Okay, Astrid Mastenbroek, who will be the second speaker. She works for Wageningen University, but very much in the field. And she's working for what's known as the Center for Development Innovation, CDI. For the last four years, she's been chief of party for the Integrated Seed Sector Development Project in Uganda, which is funded by the Embassy of the Netherlands. One of the major achievements of her teams has been to organize farmer groups into sustainable local seed businesses that produce and market, not give free, but market quality declared seed, which is a new class actually in Uganda, fairly new. More broadly, Astrid has been working in Africa since uh, 2005 in South Sudan, Northern Uganda, Kenya, Somaliland. She has a master's degree in irrigation and water management from Wageningen University and an MSc in ag economics from SOAS, from the School of Oriental and African Studies at London University. So thank you for coming from Uganda. Okay, our third speaker, Lata Nagarayan, is a senior economist at the International Fertilizer Development Center, which is based here in Washington, D.C. Lata works primarily on issues related to agricultural input markets, technology, adoption, and impact assessment. Lata has extensive field experience studying seed systems and markets in both South Asia and Africa, so the comparison is really excellent. She's part of the Rutgers Policy Impact Consortium with a research focus on seed policy. Lata has a PhD in ag economics from the University of Minnesota. And you should know that the work she's presenting today has been funded by USAID, Agra Together, the uh, Alliance for the Green Revolution in Africa. That's my introduction, and now we get to the heart of why you're here. So let me please introduce Dr. Loas to give the first. Some technicalities. Let's wait for that then. Huh? 
Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, morning here. But uh, where's the camera? Just hello. Uh, thanks, thanks, Louise, for, for this extensive um, introduction. Uh, it might even see that my talk will be shorter than the introduction. And now I'm not sure how this is going to work. Maybe it's in front. Oops. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Ha! Huh, technology. Um, hello again. Seeds. Seed is life. Seed is not just an input for agriculture. In order to enhance yields, just like agrochemicals and fertilizers, no seed is the basis of all crop production in the world. So seed. Having seed, having the right seed, is a concern for every farmer, whether he's in Africa or in the Midwest or in Europe, it's the same. Seed has to be available, the identity of the seed has to be correct, and the quality of the seed has to be correct. Farmers have, and Luis hinted on that already, have different, different sources. And it's not that different farmers use different sources. No, one farmer may buy some vegetable seed which is imported. At the same time, he may buy some hybrid maize seed from a national or international company. At the same time, he may get some pure white sesame seed from the trader who wants to buy his crop for export and it has to be pure white. Maybe he keeps cowpea seed or cuttings from cassava himself, he gets it from his neighbors, or indeed goes to the market and buy seed or grain. What is it? So when we talk about seed, when we think about seed, and Louise used that word also, that needs some flexibility. Because thinking about hybrid maize seed provision may come, well, may be quite different, will be quite different from cowpea seed provision or vegetable seed provision. There's no blueprint. Today we're going to discuss one small but still important item in that whole story. And now I have to go through. There we were. And that is that seed quality, you cannot see it by looking at the seed. A seed identity, which variety is it? Very often you cannot look at it, uh, you cannot see it by looking at the seed. So that's why already many, many years ago, this whole concept of seed quality control and certification has come up. Farmers have to get some guarantees. So basically the whole seed quality control concept is a consumer protection system. If the consumer, that is the farmer, who buys seed, that he can trust a label, that it is the right variety, that it is the right quality that he's expecting. Um, but also, at the same time, seed quality control systems serve to create a level playing ground for different seed suppliers. If you have to deal with the same quality characteristics, it means that fly-by-night seed providers, fly-by-night, is that American? I see here in the hall, so maybe you out there will see those crooks, I mean, um, that they don't have a chance because they cannot get the same label. That's the whole idea. Um, And what, is, what does it entail? What are the basics of seed certification without going into all details? Basically, seed certification guarantees which variety is in the bag, that the variety in the bag is the same as what's on the label. And that's quite a complex thing. And the trick created many, many years ago was we need a generation system from pre-basic, basic, certified, certified one, two, three, a limited number of generations 
from a very pure variety seed lot, breeder seed, <coughs> to what farmers actually get, bulking it uh, in a systemic way. Then we have seed quality control, seed testing. That's the important thing. Will the seed indeed germinate? And um, also, um, the seed moisture has to do a lot with storability. So what does that require in practice? It requires a lot of paperwork. Before you get the label, all farmers, all seed producers have to be registered. We have to know what they plant, what they harvest, etc. You have field inspection, meaning that preferably an outsider has to come and see are there off types in the field, is it a healthy crop, etc. And that is seed testing, germination testing, purity testing, seed moisture. That's a pretty com complex thing to do, which was developed, well, about 100 years ago in some countries in Europe, and I'm not sure here, but pretty sure it was as well. And it has grown into a very precise procedure to, um, to guarantee this seed quality and identity. When we're talking countries where the seed sector is younger, um, we may understand that the situation may be different. Where seed inspectors cannot, well, I'm from the Netherlands. Going from the far south to the far north is two and a half hours drive, so you can visit fields in one, one day. Luckily, we have inspectors in different places to make it even more efficient. I worked in Uganda for quite some time. I worked in Sri Lanka for quite some time. Infrastructure is a bit challenging. So simply having the human resources, having the financial resources, having the yeah, the logistics ready to implement that complex system, um, it's quite cumbersome. And a lot of, inv of investments have gone into establishing seed certification systems in many countries. Um, World Bank, present here, FAO, all kinds of bilateral donors have spent a lot of money developing that system, creating seed laboratories, training inspectors, as soon as the kind of, um, well, call it the subsidies on seed quality control uh, started to disappear, then the question is who is going to pay for it, for the system? Obviously, the interested party, the seed producer. And there we run into a big challenge. Well, more challenges than one. When the cost of seed certification can really become a bottleneck in producing seed, especially as a commercial guy, low margin seeds, a lot of the margin will have to go into the quality control. And then, and that what we see with a number of crops, um, it's better not to start produce, for example, legume seed in particular countries. So, Expensive seed certification systems may reduce the availability of quality seed for farmers. And that was exactly not the idea of building up a certification system. It was meant to enhance the availability of quality seed to farmers. And there's a bit of an issue. Sorry, I'm too late with this one. This is what I just uh, told you. Um, and the other risk of this whole system is that worse than having no certification system is having a poorly implemented system where you cannot, well, you can wait for the inspectors and they don't come. At the end of the season, you don't have all the inspections done. It may not be certified. Um, and I'm not even talking about how difficult it is, it is to manage poorly paid uh, government servants in this kind of jobs. And the result there is that 
again, it is meant to create, oh, only five minutes left, um, uh, that there's a big risk of fake seed that you have smart people who copy the labels and put rubbish in the bag. And that means that the whole idea of um, a trust in seed is gone. So official control is necessary in the local seed systems where the buyer seller, where the buyer has seen the crop, there's no certification. Um, and where it is useful, um, we have to think of how to reduce the cost of the whole operation. Answers are decentralized inspections, risk-based inspections, etc. You have been muted. Your microphone has been turned on. Used in broad terms, uh, came up. Can we develop a low-cost uh, farmer protection through um, a risk-based seed quality control system, which is locally operated um, and which should provide not the top guarantee for every seed lot, but at least a proper, um, well, that farmers can be quite sure that they are not buying rubbish. And again, if this uh, should reduce uh, fake seed in the market, it should, hand, it should go hand in hand with market controls, of course. And this idea was developed for seed production of low margin crops, particularly. So quality declared seed aims at making more quality control seeds available to poor farmers, and especially of different crops than from where um, seed, certified seed is, is very possible. It should help to reduce fake seed in the market that we all, of course, want. And it focuses on local seed trade. So it does not, it should not compete with fully certified seed markets. And that's an important aspect as well, of course. So those are my three messages for my last minute. Is that seed quality control is important. And it aims at battling fake seed in the market. It helps um, food security and rural development through the planting of better seed. Official seed uh, certification is very useful for the commercial crops, for the commercial farmers. It may be, it is less useful for low margin crops like legumes and, and others. And quality declared seed um, may provide a kind of silver standard, uh, not challenging the gold standard of certified seed that altogether Farmers get access to a much broader range of good seed to plant good crops to sustain their families and sustain food, secu food security in their country. That's what I want to leave to you. Thank you very much. This excellent overview. We're now going to look at two case studies, and at the end, we'll take the range of questions. So please hold your questions. Thank you. So our next speaker is Astrid Mastenbrook. Thank you, Louise. Uh, thank you, Niels, for introducing the topic for today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, audience. Um, today I'm presenting about quality declared seat as filling the gap between the formal and the informal seat as a case of Uganda, as uh, Louise also mentioned, uh, QDS is a fairly new seed class in Uganda. So we have some um, trends and I would like to present them. Quality um, assured seed is important for farmers because it's difficult to see as a product for a smallholder farmer whether something is good or bad seed. So for that certification is important and also um, for that, the, the cost or the price of certification is important, as also Niels just uh, presented on. 
So basically, the presentation, my presentation, um, I'll briefly look at the draft seed policy statement and the certification process. Then, uh, what is quality declared seed, and how is it the quality assured in Uganda? Then have some comparisons between certified seed and QDS, especially for legume crops, as we said, the small margin cro crops. Then we look a little bit at the potential. Is there a market for QDS in Uganda? And then a few takeaway lessons. So um, basically, if we look at the, the draft um, national seed uh, policy in Uganda, which is at the moment with top management for endorsement, we look at a competitive, profitable, and sustainable seed subsector where all farmers and other seed users have access to affordable quality seeds. And its mission uh, states to create a well-regulated seed sector that ensures availability of and access to safe and high quality seed under a pluralistic seed sector. So you've seen I've highlighted a few words which are I think very important uh, because we want to avoid a one, one size fits all. Different crops have uh, different needs. So a pluralistic system means, as Niels also explained, we have the multinationals mainly focusing on uh, vegetables and maybe hybrid maize and some of the other hybrids. We have national seed companies, but we also have local seed producers. So different systems exist next to each other and have their own role. So similarly, we have different uh, quality assurance systems that falls under the well regulation. We have the government seed certification system for certified seed, for quality declared seed, but also private inspection company, which was recently set up. So there are different uh, solutions to make sure that smallholder farmers can access quality seed. So as I mentioned, in Uganda, we have two um, recognized seed classes for marketing quality seed. So I'm not looking at the earlier generations or uh, standard seed because we're talking about um, quality seed. So we have certified seed produced by seed companies. That's the way it's set up in Uganda. And um, we have that focuses on uh, hybrid maize, but also the other crops, also legumes, all the other crops. And we have quality declared seed, which is produced by farmer groups. And I'll come to that later. Um, in the picture, you see His Ex Excellency, the President of Uganda, signing off on both of the quality standards, quality labels, the blue one for certified seed and the green one for quality declared seed. So what is quality declared seed in Uganda? Basically, it's produced by farmers and by farmer groups, and it's sold within the community. That is an important uh, distinction from certified seed, which can be traded internationally and sold through the agro-dealer network. It's for locally demanded crops and varieties. So they, gen they don't have a national demand, but it's really focused on crops and varieties that farmers want in specific localities. It is quality assured, and it fills a gap for crops and varieties not served by seed companies. So if we look at the moment under the QDS scheme, we have several crops, mainly the legumes, roots and tubers, um, uh, minor cereals like simsim, sim, potato, beans, cowpeas, cassava, pigeon peas, groundnut, soybeans, sorghum. So what you don't see is the hybrid maize, the, the, the OPVs, also the rice, because QDS focuses on self-pollinating crops and uh, vegetatively um, propagated materials. So if we look at the quality assurance procedure for QDS in Uganda, I know different countries have slightly different systems. So this one was tailor-made for Uganda. And it's produced from the same starting material as certified seed. It's called foundation seed or basic seed, as Niels mentioned. So basically to produce seed, you need also starting material. So both certified seed and QDS use the same high quality starting material. Also, uh, like certified seed, the producers have to submit um, the planting returns. Basically, those they have to give a list with the fields 
that they're growing the seed and also the amount of uh, starting material that was planted to make sure that when it's harvested, it's real seed and not something else. So in the case of U uh, QDS, it's to uh, district agricultural officers. So it's a decentralized system to basically reduce the cost and to make sure that the inspection is close to the farmers. Um, the QDS is inspected twice in the season, compared to three times for certified seeds, so there's a, an, another difference. And it's on a, a percentage of the field. Not all the field of all the farmers are uh, inspected, but these groups have very strong internal quality assurance mechanisms because they know very well that if they sell bad seed, they're out of business immediately. So these district agricultural officers, they are accredited by the National Seed Certification Services as a delegated authority. The process is being formalized. As I mentioned, it's still a very new seed class. Then after harvest, the seed is also tested in the seed lab. And the germination and purity and moisture content um, standards are the same as for certified seed. So it has the same germination rate as certified seed as a minimum standard. So once the, the seed passes the inspections, they get positive reports and the seed test results are back uh, positively, they, get, they buy the government issued sample, uh, sorry, label, the green one which you can see on the seed pack here in the middle. It's a tamper-proof label to avoid um, fake seed being brought on the market and all the seeds are registered in a computer system. So what, what are the benefits for quality declared seeds? Um, I've picked an example of legumes because it's a, a crop with a low multiplication rate. So if you would plant one kilo of of maize, you would get about 100 kilos in return. For legumes, it's maybe if you plant one kilo, you get maybe 10 or 15 kilos in return. So the yields are, or it's much lower. It's a quite bulky product to market uh, from a, a marketing perspective because the seeds are rather big. It has a low uh, profit margin and the crops are self-pollinating, which means Farmers can easily reuse the seed for a number of seasons, maybe three, four times. If they keep the seed well, there is no problem with that. But as a seller, of course, it makes your market very uncertain because one year a farmer will come, the other year he may not come because he has enough at home. So um, I've compared the cost for beans. You see on the slide um, the blue bars are the sales prices and the red bars are the cost of production approximately. So if we start on the right side, you see the local market. So basically uh, the red bar is the farm gate price, the, the price at which the farmer sells his harvest. And the blue bar is the price he buys it back at if he would want to plant the same material as seeds. So basically what we see is that um, there's a difference in cost of production for each of the, the graphs, the, the, the seed, the products. But you also see there's a difference in profit margin. So basically the most important message from this graph is that producing one kilo of certified bean seed costs 81 dollar cents, US dollar cents, yet Quality declared seed is on average sold at uh, $76 cents. So to produce quality declared seed is much cheaper comparatively. And also the profit margins are rather small. So if we look at the, for other crops like um, groundnuts, beans, and soybean, we can see that the QDS price, the middle, the orange bar, is quite close to the grain uh, price, the local market price. But for the certified seed, there's quite a big difference. 
So the difference is around 30 to 40 percent in price for certified seeds and quality declared seeds. So this provides a high potential for quality declared seeds. And if we look at the, as I mentioned, the standards for germination seed purity, they're the same. So we had a, a number of uh, tests from the National Seed Certification Lab, and they showed that all the samples meet the minimum standards. So in this case, the 13 samples for beans, germination was between 90 and 99 percent, and the standard is 80 percent. So we did some uh, yield verification plots to compare home saved seed with QDS, and the yield increase is about 670 kilos per, per hectare, which means that a, a farmer would invest $3 extra uh, for the 23 kilos he needs to plant. His return would be $23. So in dollars it sounds a bit small, but in Uganda shillings actually it's quite a big, a big difference. So what is the potential? We've seen that uh, the potential is in, uh, to, it brings more affordable quality seed to the markets. And I will also come to that. It shifts, uh, it hopefully encourages farmers to shift from buying uh, grain or potential seed from the local market, which is poor quality, to quality seed, because we've seen there's a smaller price increase. So um, going quickly over the volumes that have been produced under, under the system, uh, under the ISSD project and the pilot with the ministry, you can see, for example, for beans, it's about 200,000 metric tons was produced in 2016. So that would reach on average 8,600 farmers if they, because they use on average 23 kilos of seed. So it's still very small. We see an increasing trend in groundnuts, as well as in soybean, the market is picking up. So who are the customers? The, ma the majority of the customers are actually the smallholder farmers buying from these local seed businesses, as we call them. But also NGOs and government and seed companies are buying some of the seed. So if we look... Um, at the potential customer segmentation, as Louise already mentioned, also in Uganda, only 2% of the seed farmers buy from agro dealers or seed companies, and then another maybe 2% is from the local seed businesses, so they're about the same. So if you look here, upper, this is certified quality seed, both QDS and certified seed. So it's only 9% in total, of which 5% is free handouts. It's the government and NGO projects. Then we have the home saved seed. And as I mentioned, there's nothing against home saved seed because farmers can reuse the seed for multiple seasons. But what we want to target is here the, I'm running out of time, so I have to speed up a little bit. Um, we see here 43% is low quality seed or seed from the local market. That is the target for QDS. And if we, look at during periods of stress, we see even this becomes more pronounced. It's almost 70% of the farmers buys their seed from the local market. So when we talk about climate smart agriculture, we also need to look at seed sources. They hardly have any home seed for legumes, but they have to look at their neighbors. But of course the neighbors are equally stressed as well. So the ones that did better are sharing the seed with others. But especially that it becomes 70% of all the smallholder farmers. That's a huge potential market. That also means there is space for everybody, for certified seed, for QDS. So basically, uh, the market segment is, is, is the local market segment or the, uh, the, um, the grain that farmers buy from the local market and plant their seed for legumes, for minor cereals, like millet, for planting materials, because they're already in the habit of buying seed. And then, but they need affordable seed, basically, because that's why they go to the local market. 
So I want to highlight also, I've presented a very rosy picture. So of course, there are also some challenges to making the system sustainable, which basically circle around um, their few producers. So we need to work with like-minded uh, organizations that focus on smallholder entrepreneurship. Our groups have many women also in them. Um, it's the limited capacity for inspection. Eh? As uh, Neil said, the country is huge, so you need many inspectors. So decentralization and accreditation of district agricultural officers is needed, as well as decentralization of accessing the labels, which come at the moment from Kampala, as well as the, the inputs, the foundation seat as well. Because at the moment you have to travel quite far because it's centrally produced. And then lastly, also, we need um, coordination. Just like there's a Uganda Seed Trade Association, the quality declared seed producers, also again in zonal level, have organized themselves already because they see a need for coordination. So basically, um, I would say quality declared seed is filling a gap between certified seed and the local uh, market seat it's quality assured it's a silver standard there's a difference in uh, certification process if, as you've seen it is affordable as you also saw in the previous slides the difference between the grain price and the qds prices is, is not that much because of reduced cost of certification but also because of reduced transport costs because it's sold within the vicinity and it can also provide a source of quality seed, especially during climatic stresses and replaces, replacing farmers buying seed from the local market. So thank you very much. Okay, Astrid, thank you very much. Um, we'll hold the questions, of which there are many, coming online. We'll have the last case now from Tanzania, and then we'll start to ans uh, answer the questions. Thank you. So, Latina that I am. Um, greetings to all, and thank you, Louis, for organizing this very important forum. Um, the work I'm presenting here is funded by um, USAID um, uh, through a project uh, called Scaling Seeds and Technologies Partnership that is being implemented by Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, AGRA. SSTP is operating in six countries in Africa, um, but for today's pre presentation, I'll be focusing uh, the experience of their working with legume seed production, quality legume seed production in Tanzania. Dr. Richard Jones, who is the chief of the party of um, SSTP um, and also the co-author of this presentation, is joining us online um, from Senegal. And we are, will be very happy to um, answer any of your questions at the end of this presentation. Just to give a quick context of before getting into the SSTP interventions uh, with regard to legume seed uh, production in um, Tanzania, I just wanted to give a quick uh, context of the situation of the legume crops in Tanzania. They occupy more than 10% of the area in Tanzania. The key legume crops uh, are mainly common beans, pigeon peas, and cow peas. Soybean is also gaining momentum uh, with the initiation from private sector. And um, the legume crops in Tanzania are considered to be very important in terms of providing household food security, nutrition, and income security, and with, with its soil health benefits apart from tolerating drought, that is, it's a resilience crop. More and more it's being viewed. Moreover, legume, uh, if you see the uh, legume crops in Tanzania and the importance of legume crops in Tanzania, it is gaining momentum in terms of its importance, uh, offering importance in terms of regional trade and also export potential, especially pigeon peas. There is a great demand for pigeon pea uh, exports from East Africa, especially from Tanzania, with, it, with their South Asian counterparts, and also um, the regional trade with regard to common beans. 
if you see the legume seed supply situation in Tanzania, um, as uh, iterated by my previous uh, um, uh, presenters, there are three kinds of seed systems exist in Tanzania. One is semi-formal, uh, one is formal, semi-formal, and informal. I ca we categorize QDS, or the quality declared systems, under the semi-informal systems because it has the characteristics of both. So if you, you can see that the adoption of the improved varieties of the legumes or the improved varieties per se is less than 5% uh, of the total acreage. And of the total certified system, uh, seed supplied, you could say it's, it's less than 1% of the seeds used by the farmers are certified. Semi, uh, and if, uh, the QDS, the quality declared system, um, which is very popular, especially for maize and rice in Tanzania, um, produces very limited amount of uh, legume seeds in Tanzania. As you could see, that it, it uh, basically supplies less than 20 metric tons uh, for the leading crops in Tanzania. So currently, you can see that the legume seed supply is dominated by the informal systems, which is farmer, farmer to farmer exchanges or buying through local markets or through um, the farmer saved uh, systems. This is possible, especially in the case of the legume crops, because the physiological quality is less of an issue in legume seeds. But um, you cannot rely on these informal systems because it's, it's not a structural system to introduce any new varieties with good quality traits. Just wanted to give you a quick um, uh, overview of the seed system functioning and the actors for legumes uh, crops in Tanzania. You could see that the public sector dominates all stages of um, the seed production, right from uh, the, mostly the early seed generation and also uh, the foundation seed, uh, and also it goes all the way up to commercial seed production, production and marketing system. Of late, the Tanzania law allows the private firms to enter into the foundation seed production, but very few companies have entered into this uh, particular sector. And QDS uh, increased interest by private firms in commercial seed production in addition to farmer groups and farmers involved in quality declared system in Tanzania. You could see that there is a huge potential for QDS producers and who are, you know, who can exploit this kind of a commercial seed uh, production on a large scale, especially for legume crops in Tanzania. Just to uh, give a quick overview of the quality declared system um, in Tanzania. Tanzania is one of the pioneer countries in Africa who, introduced, who first introduced quality declared systems into their, into their seed uh, um, system, I would say that. Uh, they are the first country to adopt. And as, you, as, uh, as explained by my previous presenters, it's, a, uh, it's produced by the registered and trained farmers or farmers group in their own lo locality and for their own use and um, wh wherever the seed is produced. The QDS system in Tanzania started uh, on a pilot scale in 18 districts um, in 1998, in the late 1990s, with the Danina program. And the Tanzania Seed, uh, also Seed Act also recognizes the quality declared seed, uh, seed, seed production since 2003. From 2007 onwards, it has been a part of the national seed law of Tanzania also, and more than 90% of the districts are covered um, or, or under adoption of uh, quality declared system for some kind of a crops, either cereals or uh, legume crops or even tubers. So one could see the, um, but there are a few constraints also in uh, quality declared system in Tanzania because the existing ruling uh, rule in Tanzania does not allow um, QDS it, it, it is the same as Uganda or any, anywhere else where it is being practiced beyond the districts where it is being produced. And also the lack of marketing capacity. It, this limits the QDSC to government seed distribution and NGO investments and also uh, 
uh, uh, exchange of seeds uh, with the neighboring farmers or in the locality. I, I just wanted to quickly um, go through the SSTP interventions, the project, the scaling seeds and technology partnership interventions on uh, producing good quality legume seeds uh, and, and encourage the production of legume seed production in Tanzania. USAID funded the Scaling Seeds Technology Partnership uh, to promote the sustainable partnerships for accelerated uh, access to and the adoption of new seed varieties, not only legumes, for other cereal crops also. They have adopted two kinds of interventions. One is at the project level, and another is at the policy level. It is very important that the policy uh, complements the project level interventions to have a, a complete system in place. As I mentioned earlier, the, the projects uh, of SSTP focus more on reducing the cost of the seed delivery, including the production, transportation, and marketing, and making uh, from the conventional ways and cheaper alternatives of producing good quality seeds and distribution mechanism to the farmers, especially the legume seeds. The first project, uh, which is being implemented in northern Tanzania to improve the access to new bean seed varieties, it's being operated under public-private partnership mode. The research materials or the early generation seed materials are given by SIAT, and it's being completely controlled, and, and, and further seed production is taken with the help of private seed firms at the commercial uh, seed production level, and, and also public um, uh, agencies like ASA, the uh, seed agency of Tanzania. And technology transfer it happens through the private extension, uh, sorry, public extension uh, system, as well as the input dealers. The major approach here is uh, building an effective multi-stakeholder seed system platform, and through which uh, the awareness or the demand is created for the legume seeds. Legume seed marketing itself is a new concept in Tanzania, and the commercial seed systems doesn't exist before. The, uh, the, the, in addition to this, adding value to the seeds, because the crops like legume, where the seed quality is often compromised by pest and disease attack, especially in the storage, seed, seed treatment is a very important vehicle to be packaged along with the seed. Uh, along with the seed. The second approach is completely through uh, uh, a commercialized system that is the private sector. So it, it, it is, um, it is a, a pure business model in legume seeds production and delivery. And here, this demand is simulated through private extension using private sector. The third uh, major uh, intervention by uh, SSTP is creating an enabling environment for, uh, to address the legal and regulatory challenges facing the seed industry and legume seeds also. The, this would require accreditation, that is recognizing the private firms, licensing the private seed inspectors, and easing the barriers to introducing new varieties into the system. These, all these things are aimed to reduce the cost of um, seed certification or the seed quality control mechanisms in place. So, um, so enhance the quality of the seeds delivered and by scaling up and then by competition. I just wanted to give a quick uh, uh, analysis of a comparative analysis of the cost of seed production, which we calculated um, in the SSTP uh, for beans, comparing the formal, informal, and semi-formal systems. Here, our results indicate that, yes, farmer safe systems have higher returns compared to formal and semi-formal systems of seed production. However, one should realize that a snapshot like this does not capture the benefits to be gained by the introduction of new varieties into the system. And when uh, comparing the formal and semi-formal, the QDS, it is clear that QDS is an effective vehicle for dissemination of the new varieties and it is cost effective and the seed producers the the the, the major reason one of the major things that is required at this point uh, is they should be uh, kind of linked to a reliable supply of quality early generation seeds the main takeaways one could uh, get from these 
three interventions on legume seeds in Tanzania is, as such, you know that the commercial firms in Tanzania sell only the certified seeds, as per the law, and QDS is very localized. One should be aware of the fact that the commercial seed firms in Tanzania, especially the private firms, are recognizing the quality of the seed produced through QDS, and they are interested in marketing them. There is an opportunity to be exploited by allowing, allowing the pri private firms to do the marketing and use the QDS producers market, market beyond the local areas. Seed marketing is a, legume seed marketing is a very, relatively a new concept in Tanzania or anywhere else in Sub-Saharan Africa could say that. The experience shows that the small seed packs stimulate effective demand and over-regulation sometimes prevents uh, the local competition also. In more developed markets in India, um, increased competition between seed companies leads to diversification of the companies um, into more offering more crops and varieties and also moving towards the higher forms of quality control, such as which is internally controlled rather than externally regulated. So uh, after all, you know, seed regulatory agencies, as Louise also mentioned in her presentation, need to be flexible to move away from the stringent uh, certified regime um, to much more relaxed QDS and ultimately with more and, uh, with more, and more commercial firms uh, participating in this endeavor, moving towards the truthfully labeled system, which you can claim that as a gold standard where onus is the, where the responsibility of the producer is to maintain the quality. I would like to thank you all and I would like to acknowledge um, the contributions made by the SSTP team. Rutgers University, my colleagues from the Rutgers University Consortium, and Mark Asenga, BFS USAID, of course, Lewis. Thank you. Okay, let's start with the questions, and there's a real cluster of dynamic questions, and actually, I'm going to start with those who have been writing, because they've been doing it quite vigorously. Okay, there are a cluster of questions on scale and geography, and I'm just going to say them together. So... QDS, this is from Julia, QDS seems very local. You know, are there examples of QDS honestly going to scale? And then related to that, from Seten, you know, there are very strong geographic limitations to the sale of QDS. How limited are we really talking about? And then a third link to this from Loretta, you know, would farmers have greater incentive if they were allowed to market it wherever and not just locally? Okay, so very hard questions on geography. Shall I, shall I kick off? Um, I think the origin of thinking about QDS comes from the fact that uh, faraway regions are very difficult to reach by the inspectors from the official certification office. So I suppose the, um, that's the origin of thinking about QDS. And when we talk about um, farmer seed groups in such, well, call it faraway regions, I think that's where the concept really emerged. Whether you need to legally limit the sales of seed produced by such producers um, under such quality control system to a district or whatever, um, I'm not sure whether that's actually really necessary. But that's a part of local policies for implementing such a system. The first uh, the first step to be taken is that it is made possible at all in uh, a national legislation. And that took, after the introduction of the concept by FAO, that took quite some time in many countries. And now I think it is up to different countries to implement it in the way that suits their local condition. Uh, so I don't see a real need as a principle to limit the movement of quality declared seed within a small uh, distance. 
Okay. Let me also add on this. I would like to stress that the, the quality declared seed system is a national system in Uganda. So it's a government system. And um, so it is being rolled out nationally. All the district agricultural officers are being trained. And also with the new ISSD project, we are going to work with like-minded uh, like organizations to train more farmer groups to cover the entire country. And what we've seen is that there is sufficient market incentive for their groups to produce and market the seeds, for them to go to scale. So in that sense, they already have sufficient incentive to produce and market uh, the seed. They, they generate quite some profits at their levels. Um, yeah, in the case of Tanzania also, it's a part of the national law. And, that, and in Tanzania, it's been in practice for quite some time, as you, as you saw there. Um, there are, yes, that's the one, uh, even through SSTP project, uh, removing this kind of a geography limitations, the policy level interventions um, are mainly uh, focusing on, in, you know, working with the existing system, the legal system, uh, to remove some of the constraints uh, in, uh, as, as, uh, in imposing the constraints on the geographical uh, restrictions. Yes, farmers have, uh, not only farmers, the commercial seed firms are becoming more and more aware of the quality uh, of the seeds produced by these QDS producers, and they are showing actually, uh, in the case of Tanzania, the projects which uh, SSTP is uh, implementing, we are seeing the push from the commercial seed firms, the private firms, who are already doing maize or any other cereal crops. In order to diversify, as they also grow mature, they wanted to add one more uh, crop into the system, diversify their pro portfolio, and they see QDS as a major vehicle through which they can expand more. And in, a, in any of these countries with very little uh, varieties, uh, modern varieties available, like in a whole of Tanzania, you would, you, you would think that, you know, uh, in legume seeds especially, it's more, maximum of 30 varieties is, are only available. So it is easy um, if you can remove these kind of a locational restrictions because most of the varieties released by the national or the international ag systems uh, consider these locational or the ecological aspects of it and then they are much more uh, 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 suitable for a wider geography than restricting to the local systems like of uh, some of the highly cross-pollinated crops like maize. Okay, following on that question, another one from Tishale. Doesn't QDS really diminish the business for commercial enterprises? I mean, you say there are different market segments, but what is the real evidence that there is no competition? Uh, yeah. 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 So I think, as I've also shown in the graphs before, it's actually expanding the business, also the business potential for the commercial companies because it it makes farmers get used to buying quality seeds and then from a silver standard they can upgrade to um, to a gold standard like certified seeds plus most of these crops the QDS crops are not crops taken up by the commercial seed companies so we should not also forget that there are a few crops where there's some overlap like beans for example but if you look at the potential bean demand there's space enough for everybody. If 70% of the smallholder farmers is going to buy quality seeds, there's space enough for everybody. Okay, sir. So now we're taking a question from the audience here in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Uh, Rob Neuter with IFDC. I have a question for Astrid, but Latha may also be able to uh, shed some light on this. You showed the differential in productivity of the uh, QDS seed compared to farmer safe seed on beans of 670 kilograms, I think it was. But if I was a farmer and I was looking at my alternatives, I'd want to know what the differential between QDS and certified is to see if the extra little investment that I make in certified seed would pay off. Do you have those data? Um, no, we don't have those data at the moment. I know that uh, the seed inspection company Ag Verify in Uganda is going to collect that data. But I want to stress that the germination rates are the same. 
So I would expect the yield benefits to be the same, to be honest. Hmm. Um, in our case, you know, yes, there was a difference, a slight difference uh, you saw in the benef benefit cost returns between the certified seed and the QDS seed production in uh, Tanzania. I think it's, again, I, I explained that it's a, just a snapshot and then it's, uh, it's to one particular variety as with variety changes and stuff, it, it's going to change. But again, um, QDS is, um, uh, it's, uh, the, the difference between the QDS seed and the certified seed is basically QDS is still depending on, especially for this early generation seeds, um, the supply of, um, it, it is depending on um, some other system. Uh, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't have the uh, you know uh, the best quality seed compared to the certified seed because even for the QDS producers, depending on the uh, the previous foundation seed, um, which sometimes is not available or late, you know uh, may not be the best quality and all those things. So there is a slight difference, and uh, that takes care of you know that that's the one which was showing in Tanzania case. Okay, we're taking another question from Washington. Uh, Lauren Good uh, from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I am very interested in this connection between the formal system and the semi-formal QDS. And Latha, I think what, what you just said, I think um, I, maybe there's a little discrepancy between what you're seeing in Tanzania as Uganda. Because my understanding was in Uganda, the source you said in your presentation was the same. It's foundation seed. And by... Uh, by extension, if you say it's foundation seed, foundation seed, if it's called foundation seed, is certified. And that means that it has traceability back. So it comes from, from uh, basic seed, or from pre-basic or breeder seed, which means that it is of a released variety. So that would, so what this is saying, and I, I appreciate is that QDS ideally is also a system for disseminating and getting and a constant replacement of varietal turnover, varietal change um, there. But it sounds like there's a little difference in actually how it's implemented, whether it really is. So maybe you want to comment on that. And the other, the other uh, just uh, question that I'm curious from where you've seen this working well. I know in Tanzania it's been used for a long time. I wouldn't say it's very widespread and working as well. What is the connection to the seed regulators, so for a Toski or a Mae for in Uganda, for um, the QDS system? Is that an extension of the formal system? Should those inspectors be gazetted, trained, you know, build their capacity by the national program that also does certification? What, what's an ideal link? And the reason I ask that is currently QDS, for example, in Tanzania, is still ward level. That's sub-district level. So if you were going to go and build capacity for those local inspectors, and that was done under Toski, we would never get those that amount of training unless Toski increased inside tenfold. So I'm just curious to kind of the connection. What does an ideal system look like for the connection? Um, it's always nice to, to think about ideal systems. I, li I, I like that. Trouble is that um, the world is not always ideal, uh, Laura. Um, I think the, the training of inspectors is a very important aspect. And uh, in a big country like Tanzania, or, well, there are many more, um, that's, that's quite a challenge indeed. Um, but the reward of doing that can be very big because um, uh, it means that you can produce quality seed in a much wider area than, than when you have to deal with only the, the centralized uh, certification system. Um, so my little experience in some countries is that some inspection agencies consider uh, QDS and working on QDS as losing some of their power. So inherently, 
management wise from the certification agencies that may not be very much in favor on the other hand other well certification agency managers do consider this as a chance to increase the output of what they do not because they have to do it themselves but by delegating acts to to others and that's a kind of um, uh, mindset of the institutional leaders um, and I think that is a bit of an issue in in some countries so maybe um, in the case of Uganda I think there are some differences between uh, the the way it is rolled out in Tanzania and in Uganda and they were they were uh, governmental or ministerial choices to set it up in this way I think definitely QDS is a great way to disseminate new varieties especially for low margin crops at the moment indeed all the seed is from uh, foundation seed from Naro the seed policy allows for local varieties as well but that would need maintain our seed so we haven't reached that level so there are no practical practical examples but if farmer groups would want they could also produce local varieties but I think the main benefit is also to disseminate new varieties especially now with the climatic changes uh, drought tolerance pest and disease uh, to tolerant varieties we have seen that there's a, a high interest actually from district level authorities to be involved in seed inspection because it's actually a service which is demanded so the farmers are demanding them so finally they also feel they and there's work that is appreciated and the ministry is training the district agricultural officers of course there's a, a reasonable turnover and with 107 districts it is a bit of a, a challenge at least for the next uh, four years we have funding to support the training so but that of course what happens thereafter hopefully it will be institutionalized within the ministry budget as well okay related question to that on inspection from Irv Witters with the advent of advanced remote sensing and communication technologies has anyone looked at more innovative approaches to verification and accountability versus sending inspectors to a percentage of the fields? Um, actually, no, this is not from the SSPP side, but I can say from the IFDC angle. Um, we are implementing a project on agriculture technology transfer in Ghana, ADD project, where um, uh, we do use some kind of a drones, uh, some kind of a remote sensing technologies to assess what kind of uh, what variety is being planted, especially for soybeans and maize, uh, uh, we've started in a very high, on a pilot scale. This, uh, this is also another USAID funded project. Uh, on a pilot scale, we are implementing that. Um, not uh, to replace the seed inspection as such, at least for uh, the uh, you know for the at the project level, we wanted to know the extent of a particular variety that's being cultivated. Uh, we have uh, used that on a very pilot scale, but yes, uh, there is quite a bit of possibility. In using. Okay, just a quick practical question from Adolfo um, to Astrid. How long does it take to typically train a farmer to become a QDS producer? Um. I think it, it actually, of course, the farmers already have the agronomic practices for field crop production. So the, in our experience, it, it takes about a year or maybe two. But then especially focusing on the internal quality assurance committees, the, the, the professional organization of the groups itself and the marketing. Because initially the groups were expecting us to do the marketing for them. but So we've seen a great, it takes a bit of time, but it doesn't take that long. Once farmers see there's a demand for their products, they also become more excited and energetic. Okay, question from Washington. Hi, my name is Susan. I come from a country called Sri Lanka. <laughs> 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 uh, sorry. Uh, Niels have been to Sri Lanka, so he knows what it is. I own and operate a small seed production facility in Kandy district. 
in Sri Lanka. And uh, I have never heard of QDS, to be honest. And, and uh, my question is, how can we get access to this type of technology and take it to a country like Sri Lanka and function as a small model so that you know we can popularize these systems in that part of the world which is developing in agriculture? Thank you. Well, welcome. <laughs> I spent some beautiful years in Kendi itself. Um, why did this not come to Sri Lanka? Maybe because the seed certification service in uh, Gandharua um, is an excellent example of how to do decentralized full certification. At least it was when I was there last, and that's quite some years ago. So um, how the information can come to you and to the authorities. Um, well, I think Louise showed some FEO documents, and maybe if you invite her, she might even come. <laughs> and otherwise, I will do, because it's lovely to go to Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a question from um, the audience on the webinar. You mentioned that QDS limits fake seed. We don't understand how. Could you elaborate? Yes, I think it was me saying that. Um, experience in some countries shows that when there is quality seed produced in a decentralized way by farmer groups, uh, that the kind of not so much official market control, which is the system in certification systems, that people go to shops and take samples and find rubbish, that there's in addition to that also a kind of social control that the farmers in those regions that produce quality seed, that they observe uh, copied labels, uh, bad bags, uh, uh, seed colored with uh, lemonade coloring or whatever, they see it much earlier than uh, the official, uh, uh, the official uh, inspectors. So that would be the, the effect of, uh, of this system. Okay, Washington. Hi, I'm Amber Stewart, and I was formerly working for an agricultural social enterprise in Mali. So I was wondering about production of the QDS. Is it profitable enough that you've seen a lot of farmers take a lot of interest in getting involved in it? You mentioned that training maybe takes a couple of years, so I wonder if that's a deterrent to get involved in it, and if you could just talk a little bit about that. Okay, but I've seen myself also, um, there's some anecdotal uh, case whereby an, a new farmer group visited a group that has been producing the seed for quite some time, and they actually commented on how, how well the women were fed, how well the houses looked. So this is more kind of the anecdotal evidence. I have seen uh, especially female farmers that have constructed their own houses. So sometimes when we do the economics from outside and we cost all the labor costs, it looks like it's not very profitable. But for the farmers themselves, th their testimony say they are making money. OK, let's talk about volumes. And this is a question from Eileen, Eileen O'Connor. Has anyone compared certified seed volumes to QDS volumes? and I assume for the same crop, in countries that allow both. Now, do we have any data? Um, in Tanzania, yes, we do have some data uh, given by the um, TOSCI and ASA, um, Agriculture Seed Agency. Um, at the moment, um, QDS, uh, like you, you saw, especially for the legume crops, they are not much compared to the certified seeds, uh, certified seed supplied. Um, that's the same case with maize and rice also. Um, so QDS is gaining momentum still in Tanzania. It has its own constraints because of this localized production uh, 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 limitation. Yeah. So, so for what it's worth, in 2014, the volume of uh, bean seed that was sold was about 4,000 metric tons. 
and we compared the QDS volumes, which was only in three regions in the country, which is around 200 metric tons. So that would be about 5%, and it's just starting. But these are uh, government data set. Okay, question from Washington. Thank you. Uh, my name is Gordon Day. I'm with CNFA. Um, so my question is, in the first couple of years of a project uh, focused on QDS, what do you all see as the priorities, um, sort of the top priorities to get a QDS system up and running? That's a good question. <laughs> well, let, let me do the first thing that you need to do, is to include the possibility to do that in the national law. Yeah. I mean, that's a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that can take some time. So I understand that in Tanzania, mm -hmm. the system started already before the law was mm -hmm. passed. Um, well, 1998. I would, I would say well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, but um, that, that is something, uh, and there I have some uh, experience myself, um, in countries where it is not known, for example, probably, in Sri Lanka, it requires quite some discussion whether there's a need, whether there's a use, etc., for it. Um, and then, um, well, another important decision is uh, what I said at the very end that it should not compete with commercial seed production. In my view, if you allow farmer groups to have a reduced um, official control bill, you should also give the same opportunity to seed, to seed companies to next to their certified seed also produce quality declared seed. Otherwise, you get a problem in the market. So, but that's more the policy, the policy areas. Uh, next to that is, of course, if you want to use QDS in local seed production by farmer groups, etc. Yes, you have to organize the farmer groups, give them um, uh, support, technical support, agronomic support, but especially also uh, business management support, accounting and marketing. For most farmers, that is the most difficult thing because agronomy, they know what it is and a good farmer can produce good seed. But that, that part uh, in my experience from a, a number of years ago, that's, that's quite an issue. Yeah, the marketing skills are very important. Um, at the moment, um, at least in Tanzania, um, the QDS producers completely depend uh, on the NGOs or the aid projects, uh, whatever the uh, aid projects available there to supply their seeds. So that's very important, you know, how to become a kind of a self-sustaining commercial group uh, is a very important criteria. Yes, and then maybe in addition to that, also just awareness raising among farmers, the, the, the customers of quality seed, which cuts across yeah. just increasing the use of quality seed, whether it's certified or QDS. I think that's also very important. Okay, and question from the back, Washington. Hello, I'm Dan Silverstein. I'm a private sector and capital markets strategic advisor. Because of the evolving nature of this uh, program, it seems as though it's always going to need donor funding. Is, is that, uh, no, I'm not correct. It's at what point does it become self-sustainable and how? Thanks. Um, often, indeed, projects tend to make the users of projects dependent on foreign, foreign funding, which is a, a pity. Um, well, I said no, so it's not necessarily so. It might happen, but some experience in Ethiopia with this kind of groups is that some groups, they basically got stuck um, producing better quality seed for their own members. Some um, really expanded and started marketing in a wider and wider circle and became commercially independent. 
and some groups um, developed into contract grower groups for a larger company. And all these three models, they have a value. Um, so I think we shouldn't get stuck to, uh, to, to one idea that what these groups should become or what they should be. Uh, and some groups might disappear. Why not? And that's a pity, but it's part of reality problem, probably. And, and, and in that way, um, I think he wants to comment uh, the mic. Um, sorry, Mrs. Chair. <laughs> um, and that way, I think also that this uh, stimulus of local seed production capacity is not contrary to private sector development. It is private sector development. So with the larger investors, multinational seed companies coming in, local investors uh, investing in seed, etc., it's simply uh, another lag of the same uh, process. That's how I see it. I tried to uh, contain my question to just one idea, but I was thinking all of those things. Um, so like everything else, it sounds to me, it, it's reliant upon somebody with a passion who is going to drive this. And if, if there isn't that person, then it, it sort of fades it by the wayside. I think it, it needs, sorry, it needs two things. A market, without a market, forget it and passion indeed. I, I fully agree with that. Thank you for that one. But I've also seen in Uganda there's a passion amongst the farmers themselves. Because after three years they organized themselves in associations. It wasn't project supported. It was the, the local seed businesses took, came together and said we need an association to better uh, lobby and to get better access to the inputs we require as well as to the markets. So indeed, the, uh, the farmers we work with, you see the passion there. And I hope that also in that way it's inbuilt within the, within the system and also within the government system. Um, in, in Tanzania, the, the commercial firms uh, recognize the quality of the seeds produced by some of these groups. And uh, for them, adding this as one of the crops in their portfolio will reduce their cost of um, producing seeds from the scratch. So. In that way, uh, they would like to pursue these kind of linkages. Uh, yeah. OK, thank you all. I think we have to, to close the question part of the webinar. And it's nice to close it on the note of markets and passion. Um, thank you for the many questions. We've looked at cost, volumes, logistics, seed quality, uh, seed policy. So obviously, Engaging in QDS requires continuing these kinds of discussions. And I'd really like to thank um, Microlinks, Agrilinks, the, the US Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance for allowing this kind of free ranging discussion. You know, we don't always have the space to pursue these issues. And then I really want to thank the three presenters. Um, not being shy, you know, sharing your vision and also sharing data and, and their own concerns. So I'll thank you very much.